Okay, Yuna Cho is at the University of Utah in Incheon, Korea, majoring in behavioral science psychology, communications, writing, and rhetoric studies. Whew, that's a lot of subjects. What can you tell us about the Korean wave experience? You wrote a pretty cool article about it. Thank you. Um, in the article published in the first quarter journal, I mainly discussed how Americans think of the Korean wave. Regarding the similar topic, I'd like to share my personal experience I recently had. I have a good friend, Brian, who I met in a live online class this um, last spring semester. He was taking the class in Utah while I was in Korea. We have not met in person, but we became a very close friend by sharing Korean wave experience. For example, I introduced Korean cup noodles, which is one of the popular Korean foods, by taking a video to show how to cook. I was impressed by his reaction. He said it was so interesting and sent me lots of images. And he actually visited a Korean market in Utah the next day to buy the same cup noodles. I was surprised when he sent me a video that he was waiting for the cooked noodles for three minutes. And after that, I got a message from him saying, this is so amazing. Another fun story is that I let him know what cook cook means in Korean texting. I said, it, it, it's like LOL in English texting and Koreans use cook 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 when they want to laugh in text. Since I taught it to him, he has been using cook 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 a lot on the chat. So this kind of experience allowed me to think the Korean wave can spread through unexpected things. I have no idea that I would boost Korean culture by the video that I cooked the cup noodles or just one text to explain what cook cook means. Okay, Cornelia, back to you. <laughs> 